Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the 8th of 15 videos in the Mobile Weather App series. A link to the app website is in the description below, as well as links to the other 14 videos in this series. In this video, we'll introduce MVVM and start by creating the Forecast View model. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to get notifications when new videos in the series and others are released. If you like what you see, give it a thumbs up. And if you feel inclined to support my work, you can always buy me a coffee. I'll leave a link in the description below. No pressure though. It's time to start cleaning up our code in the content view and moving it to a more logical location. MVVM is a software design pattern that facilitates the separation of the UI from the development of the business logic or backend logic, the model, so that the view is not dependent on any model platform. For SwiftUI, this is an ideal pattern, and the best way to dig into this is to start now. Our forecast model is quite structured with many levels deep. For example, to get our high temperature of the day, we have to use day.temp.max. To get the weather information, we have to extract the first item of the weather array and then get the description. Also, this formatting of the output really doesn't belong here in the view. This is an ideal case for a view model to represent this data. So create a new file called forecast view model. Inside that file, create a struct of the same name. Our objective is to flatten the structure and format the strings that we want to present in our view. Back in content view, if we look at the list, we see that it's iterating through a forecast.daily array. So we can create our view model around that specific type, a forecast.daily. Returning to forecast view model, we can create a property called forecast that is exactly that. To prevent me from jumping back and forth between my model and here, I'll be overlaying an image of my model for reference. Normally, I'd just open another view on my 38-inch monitor, but I want you to be able to see both clearly here in this video, so I'll do an overlay. The first thing we need to do is to create a computed property that will format our forecast.dt into a string, and this requires a date formatter. Now, date formatters are somewhat expensive to create, and since we'll be creating eight of these of our objects for our list, it's very common to make this a static property. So there is only one type rather than one for each instance. So let's do that. And we'll be using the formatting that we want as well. So we'll start with private static var date formatter, which is a date formatter. It's a computed property. We'll create our instance of date formatter. And then for date formatter's date format, we can specify the string that we had before. And then finally, return the date formatter. With that in place, now we can create our computed property, which we'll call day as a string. And then we'll return self, which is our instance, date formatter dot string from forecast.dt. Make sure you use the capital S for self. I'm going to skip the image for now, and the next is the description. For this, I'll create another computer property that I will call overview, and return the same information that we had before, applying the capitalized modifier. So overview is a string, forecast.weather item zero for the array dot description dot capitalized. For our highs and lows, I need to format a number and return it as a string. Now, I can't use the interpolated string specifier anymore, but I can use a number formatter. So like the date formatter, I need to create a static number formatter property. I have a video on number formatters too, and I'll leave a link in the notes below. There are all sorts of useful number formats, and for our purposes, we're going to need two different ones to use in our view model. So I'll need to create two different number formatters so that I can assign a format or style that is different. 
The first then, let's create a static var number formatter of type number formatter. I'll create my instance of number formatter. And now I can set the maximum fraction digits to zero and then return. Now I can create a computed property for high as a string and return a new string starting with h colon for high and then use string interpolation to use our static number formatter and the string for date method on forest.temp.max. Now this is optional, so I'll provide a nil coalescer of zero as a string and I can also add the degrees symbol after that and to get degrees it's just option shift eight. For low, I'll just copy and paste the high variable and change it to min and use L instead of H. I see that the probability of precipitation is a double and it is represented by a decimal value. And I want this to be represented as a percent. So let me duplicate that static number formatter and this time I'll call it number formatter two. Instead of setting the maximum fraction digits, I can just set the number style to dot percent. Now to create the computed POP variable as a string, I can spice up our presentation by returning a string that starts with an emoji like this raindrop. And then again use string interpolation with the static number formatter string for forecast dot pop and once again offer by a nil coalescer a default value of 0% string. Clouds and humidity are integers, but reading the documentation I see that they both represent a percentage. So I'm going to use the string interpolation for both and add a percent sign. For the cloud property, like the POP variable, I want to start with an emoji. So I'll choose a cloud. There's no need for number formatter here. So we'll just go forecast.clouds in the string interpolation. And finally for humidity, no emoji this time. But let's start with the full word humidity and use the forecast.humidity property and add the percent sign on the end. Oh, let me add the percent sign on the clouds too. Well, that's step one of the process. However, we can't use it yet because our content view is using an array of forecast.daily, not an array of the forecast view model. What we need to do is to create another file that will be the view model for our entire forecast list view. And I'll show you that in the next video.